Welcome along one and all to League of Europe Season 11. This is the 11th round of the Division 1 Championship here at the League of Europe. Coming to you from France. Paul Ricard is the track that these drivers will be taking on here tonight as we approach the final stages of this 11th season of League of Europe action. Things are really hotting up in the fight to take you to the action here tonight. It is the uh, duo that you've probably grown used to over the last couple of rounds. This is myself, Daka, uh, and alongside me is Mr. Indigo, or Jamie Morris. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, thank you, Ben. How are you doing? All good, and yes, certainly very excited uh, to cover the action here tonight. Sadly, very reduced grid. Only uh, 14 drivers uh, have turned up to action, but hopefully uh, that isn't going to detract from the on-track product as we get this session underway. So, uh, Jamie, I come to you. I know you're still a very keen league racer. So what challenges would you say this track in particular throws up? I know it's not one that's popular with the drivers, but what can we expect tonight? Well, I can expect a bit of DRS trains. I'm expecting uh, quite a few moves going down into the DRS train, but uh, down into the dual wash again. But if not, up the top of the hill towards turn 10, I believe it is that fast right hander. We could see some battles going on there too, going side by side. I myself was in a practice session along with two other people in this division. So, yeah, it's lovely races here, but sometimes not everybody's fan favourite because you can produce some boring races. We've seen in the real life F1, excluded 2021, where that turned out to be a decent race with. Verstappen versus Hamilton and Perez versus Bottas at the time. So we'll see. But I think the first man on the circuit is a Williams driver of ILT Frank. No, that's the Alpine. So I get confused between the colours <laughs> again. I think it's uh, Campbell in the final corner. Yes, it is Campbell. Yes, Campbell, those icons are very similar. I don't blame you for mixing them up. Here we go then, Campbell getting set and ready to take on this French circuit. Here we go, coming up towards turn number one. Gonna maximize all the track limits around this track. The drivers have been warned about track limits on several of the corners, including that opening chicane, but we'll just have to see how they go. Now, in two, turn three, opening up, hopping over that curve. You can see you have to really work towards the edges of those white lines, planting the throttle yet again, bit of oversteer and a 21.8 heading through the first sector, that's very solid, now hard traction zone and then it's hard on the throttle, down the Mistral straight, opening up that DRS, getting up to the highest speeds you'll see on this track, in 8th gear, Tiki over up to about 330 kilometers an hour, onto the brakes and again using that curb to rotate the car through turn 9 in and get a straight exit, plant the throttle and away you go once again it's another lengthy full throttle run towards the end of the middle sector, it's a 49 three for the first two sectors. This lap is looking pretty good at the moment then for the Alpine man. Next up, flick it into turn 11 then, dabbing the brakes just slightly, running it out and then back in for the second apex, hard on the throttle yet again, then on to the brakes but feathering it all the way through the entry of turn 12 just running up towards the edge of that white line, managed to get away with it, then he is on to the bricks, yet again down the gears, into fourth, holding fourth through the second to last corner, and then into the last corner, third gear, opening up that throttle pedal, straight exit, DRS once again, and Campbell comes over the line to set a 1.28.7, that's a solid lap time, lost a little bit in the last sector I think, but ultimately, not a bad opening, we'll see how the rest of the drivers stack up to that. And so behind Russell, the championship leader, comes up to the lane then and goes substantially faster. 128.3. That is exceptionally fast for an opening run. Shadow Glow, P3 in the standings then, has not had an easy last couple rounds. He goes second on a 28.5, just a couple of tenths shy. So Russell leading the way for the moment. Verstappen slots in right behind Shadow Glow. Top three in the standings, top three in the session for the moment. But still, very, very early days. But that time from Russell, I thought that Paul would be in the low 28s and he's already getting towards that Jamie then 28-3 that's a strong way to open up that this session but with Russell you wouldn't have expected anything less yeah, I'm not bad. I was on mute there, so I, I was thinking to myself why you were talking while I was talking at the same time, but I was on mute, so uh, apologies about that. But yeah, Russell does could quickest ahead of the, uh, the Williams driver by two tenths indeed. And I've heard about Vladdy's setup as well. He is quite quick on the straight, so he might want to watch out for that. 
going down that straight there, the long straight with DRS. So the second straight after it does actually not have DRS, but I think obviously there'd be no why because of the fast right-hander as we've seen so far. But uh, great stuff indeed that if Fried goes into P5, they're displacing his ILT teammate, and I think Cucumbers is put with the order too, who's gone up into P3 with a 28.5, only about three thousands away from Shadow Glow. So 5.7 kilometer track, and they're very close in time. That's the... Uh, Skill right between these drivers here, just incredibly close indeed. I think we've got the red ball of Baki now making his way towards the final few corners here. At Fraj, you the back of the car, just stepping out as he uh, changed the direction. And we make our way out of the final corner, a bit of wheel spin on the exit too, as the DRS is enabled. Let's see what lap time he can set in the red ball. is going to be a 28.7, which puts him up to P7 ahead of Vladi. Then we've still got more to set a lap time there. As you can see in the timing sheets, not a lot of drivers haven't got a lot of time on the board, although there is 14 around here, so eight of them. Has at that time six of them had him. I believe Speed Crown is on an out lap. Rocco Reggie has invalidated and Slash, I think, is on his lap, but he's quite low in the US, so he must have validated on his first run. Yeah, I noted that from uh, Slash on the first runs uh, earlier on. So we're looking at Sweet Crown now. And the Mercedes has really rallied in recent rounds, even if the uh, last time out in Spa wasn't a good one for him. He did grab three straight podiums uh, in Baku, Albert Park, and in Vegas. So he's on a good run of form. Uh, former race winner, of course, and his former second place in the championship too in LOE D1. Driver with a lot of pedigree uh, in other leagues as well as Jamie knows. So he's certainly got a lot of experience, a lot of pace too. He does a 21.8 to the first sector, showing off some of that speed as well uh, in that Mercedes. So we'll see where he is able to put himself. Not really a noted qualifying specialist, but... Of course, on this reduced grid, you'd certainly be looking at getting somewhere near the top of the standings. Just under eight minutes gone in the session to this point. He goes hard over the curbs to the Mistral chicane. Again, the drivers were warned about going excessively uh, over track limits because of some of the corners where it's not quite monitored closely in the game. His uh, pace of the first two sectors is right on the money with what we saw from Campbell. A little bit quicker, in fact, than the Alpine man. Takes a slightly narrower line, just blipping into low gears there trying to rotate that car as best he can and then on the brakes you can see he takes a wide approach in a turn 12 little bit of understeer manages to get away with it but you do see he does run a little over the white line no invalidation but he continues on Hazara last week's race winner manages to get into the session we'll see if he can repeat those fortunes then interestingly third gear seems like the preferred choice through that last corner and Sweet Crown comes up to the line and the time is a 128.6 so I said he was slightly ahead of Campbell and he does stay there at 28 8.690 is the time in the mix, but uh, Russell's time still looking fairly untouchable as I think P's in the Alpha Terry is just getting a lap kicked off. Yeah, very nice lap time indeed for Street Car. Like you said, I'm not really knowing him as a qualifying specialist, but in the race, he really does rack up those results. They're very important results indeed. Here's another driver who is very quick as well. Relentless P's flicking through the slow speed corners in that first sector. She's been very careful, traction there. Short shifting will help. And the exit at 21.8 in that first sector. And also, I think the clouds are gathering in too. I'm not quite sure if it might rain here. I think it was quite sunny earlier on in qualifying, but mm -hmm. the clouds are starting to gather in. So weather may be playing an impact here. Might be very important to get those early laptops on the board, whereas Hazara, who's just joined, might want to consider thinking about getting out there very soon before rain could impact the circuit, but we're about to find out if he would type if it does or not. But uh, Shadow Glow is out there as well on his flying lap. We've got a piece coming towards the middle sector, 49 Point three as he flicks through the flat tire right hander we saw a large stroll pick up a bunch of now coming towards the double right hander right here as you can see they're just trail braking just using the throttle to rotate the car where Charles Leclerc crashed back in 2022 when the Stappen pits I think Charles Leclerc was pushed a bit too hard and ultimately ended up in the barriers and here we are then towards the final set as he coming towards the penultimate swooping left left hander quite a long left hander too before we enter the final corner down the second gear he goes start lock up up shifted to third immediately I know P's has played the 2024 beta so hopefully uh, he doesn't have the feel for that just yet but here we are coming towards the line is P5 ahead of his uh, good friend Sweet Crown. Yeah, I was actually talking to Pease earlier about the uh, 2024 beta. He certainly didn't have the 
best views on it, I will say. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, he does put in a very solid time, goes fifth for the moment then. Luke is heading around at the final corner in the Aston Martin, squaring up that exit. He also uses second gear around that last corner. We're seeing a bit of a contrasted styles amongst the drivers then. And he does a 29.5 again. Luke, uh, not really noted for qualifying pace. He sits in 11th for the time being. So we are looking uh, for more lap times from some of the top guns. Uh, Shadow Glow is one of them. He is rounding that final corner well. Again, you can see the clouds gathering over the circuit. The conditions are certainly worsening. Shadow Glow then getting the lap and out of the way straight away. He finds just a minute two hundredths of a second to pile on to his advantage. But Russell is going very fast behind indeed as well. We'll look to cars further along the track though. The first up is his teammate, Cabell, comes up around the final corner. 28.7 is the lap time he has on the board right now. And he finds just over a tenth and goes to fifth. 28.59. Six. I think Cucumber, oh sorry, that's uh, that Slash that's just come over the lane uh, further back. The two Alfa Romeos are running back to back on the circuit. Next up is going to be Russell. He was half a tenth up through the second sector split. We'll see if he finds more time. Up to the lane he goes then, and he does find more time. A 28.264, nearly three tenths of a second clear of everyone else. And with the conditions rapidly deteriorating, I'm beginning to believe as well we may see rain near the end of this session, Jamie. Those clouds are really starting to gather over the circuit. Yeah, the lap times are very important now, so all the drivers need to get a lot on the board if they haven't already, or improve their lap time. But a decent lap time of Russell there improves slightly middle set, so we found a lot of time in the last set to where Shadow Glow in the middle set, so it wasn't particularly quick. It was a few hundreds down, but managed to gain some time in the last set. So maybe if there is a flying lap for him, he can try and find more time where he lost it in that middle set, so try and gain some time and get the, get the gap closer towards Russell there. So majority of drivers that are heading back into the pit lane. I think Slash is on a lot of time in the Alfa Romeo. I think he is. He's coming towards the double right hand. There we go. Carrying a lot of speed. They just opened up the corner, but slightly missed the apex there, unfortunately, as we make our way now into the left hand. It can be a very difficult track, and he doesn't really connect well with the apex, but runs out wide to use all the track on the exit available to him. So we're not really pick up the... Uh, Apex he needs to try and uh, get all the time he can can, but as we make our way now towards the final corner, what is Slash going to do in the Alfa Romeo as the DRS is activated, and he was close up there in Belgium as well, and let's see what lot of time he can set in the Alfa, so 28.9 for him, and he goes into PA 11 just behind Fleddy there, we've got Hume, who is currently down in his first set, so he's not a lot of time, I think Rocco is about to go for a flying lap. Rocco and the Mercedes and just getting his lap uh, kicked off. Uh, also on the lap further along as Cucumber, but he just invalidates on the outside of turn six. So he can wave that lap goodbye then. Another frustration in recent times for NSX Cucumber. Rocco, we will watch then, but it's only a 22 flat in the first sector. Not particularly fast. Uh, of course, he doesn't have a lap time on the board, so just getting one out of the way is what he's going to be looking for more than anything as the clouds continue to set above the circuit, but no rain seems to be on the agenda just yet so these drivers still have the best track conditions to take on and try and set their best lap times. Rocco is going to try and do that. He's very aggressive on that throttle pedal out of the Mistral Chicane. Manages to avoid uh, any major wheel spin. Doesn't really lose any more time in the second sector. 49.5 uh, is the time to the first two thirds of the lap and then he continues on to the third sector. Early turn and then an early into fourth gear. Short shifts into fifth. Balancing that throttle pedal through the exit and onto the brakes yet again. Can he get that apex of turn 12? He does. He's Snaps the throttle a couple of times and then plants it fully through the exit and then towards the penultimate corner. But he clumsily runs over the track limits, heading into turn 14, spits the rear out in frustration. And that's going to be that lap going. You'd have to say, just trying to open up that penultimate corner and a rather careless mistake for the Mercedes man. It was a 28-9, uh, but he will see no more than that in this session, I believe. That is a gut-wrenching mistake from Rocco there. Yeah, I think Rocco should, nah, he should have, because he would, he would have known that either. It was a fast left hander. So I'm about to say he should have gone to the pit lane, but I realised what a particular point of that track. You can see he caught in corners there, try to get himself back in the pit lane if he can. But that was a really frustrating, uh, invalidated lot time. I've done it myself, it's just a clumsy mistake, like just going out slightly wide more than you should have, but uh, easily done around the circuit there. That shadow glow is the only one out and out of lap. Very, very early indeed, so maybe looking to go two laps just in case he validates his first lap or going for a free track. And we've got the Aston Martin out of two. 
of Luke is in the 29, so he'll be looking to get himself in the 28. So Zara is still in the pit lane, not looking to come out whatsoever. He's done this before Hazara in the last few races, although we had a split race back in Belgium, so he had to uh, start further up the front. We think he started in first place, and he did a fantastic job too in the sprint and the feature race as he went on to win the race as well in the uh, dry conditions. But here he is, there's Shadow Glow on a lap. Coming through turn one and turn two here, I always get nervous in turn two because you either spin the car if you take up this curb or if other day as well. Slash has retired then, so we won't see more of him. He will start P11 or downwards, but here we are. Now, what's his first set's going to be? We saw Rocco do a 22 0, Shadow does a 24 7, and that is very quick indeed. He's 400 so up in the first sector. Can he continue the momentum? Because the last the last lap for him, he was down in the middle sector by a few hundred, so let's see if he can try and regain some of that lost time to his previous lap. The speed claims down the Mistral straight then. He does seem to be running higher wings than most. Really heavy over the curb on the inside of turn 8. Then hard on the throttle once again coming out of turn 9. Let's see what the second sector split is looking like. It's still up. He's 700 up but he's going to need more time because Russell is so far out in front in this session. At the very least though can he extend his buffer to the cars behind. Revving out 7th gear and then down into 4th. Back up to 5th through turns 11. Now opening up turn 12. 12, takes a straight entry down into third gear, back up to fourth on the throttle once again, straightening up that exit, and away he goes. Don't run over this white line on the entry to 14, then flick it in hard. Keep the line as narrow as you can then. Down into second gear, double downshift very quickly, back up into third, <laughs> controlling the oversteer through the exit. That was right on the limit, but was it fast? Let's see. Shadow Glow comes up to the line. He does find time, but it's not enough. He stays second for the time being, and now we've got a bit of a lull because he was so out of sync. We're seeing drivers just getting their laps underway now. I think Luke is the first one. The Aston Martin gets his final lap kicked off. Yeah, he is coming through turn one and turn two, but he's not applying the ERS, and I don't know why, because he's not got enough time to go for another lap. No, he hasn't. There's 45 seconds left to go, so he's definitely not going to get another lap time. It's going to be a 22.3 in <laughs> the first set, so I'm not quite sure if he made a mistake in turn one himself and maybe got I don't know I'm not quite sure what happened to him but either way his qualifying done and dusted whether he came out too late I'm not quite sure but uh, well he could have come out too late because he was already on the circuit but uh, yeah other elsewhere the track with Shadow Glow who's just completed a lap time Verstappen has gone for a lap in the McLaren then fourth place man he finished on the podium in P3 as his rival Russell finished in P4 Verstappen finished on the inters on a dry track and he managed to keep P3 as Azara went through, but Russell was so close to overtaking him too. We saw him, Russell, stay out during the safety car, which turned out to be a bad decision, but he tried to extend that stint on the inters to make it towards the dry, and he tried to uh, stay ahead of Hazara, which didn't happen on those fresher inters Azara had. Hazara is on an outlap, but there's four seconds left to go. On the full, on the full map, there's four cars who are close contention, but Verstappen has it validated, unfortunately. Yeah, Verstappen then, just coming unstuck at the beginning of the, th the second sector, but I've been watching IRT Frank, who's absolutely flying through the first two sectors and currently in eighth position, but looking for more. Gets the car rotated well into turn 12, managing to just balance it with the throttle pedal and the steering. Heading through the exit, and then now into turn 14, ba trying to fight against the understeer. The car starts to drag out wide, and he hesitates going into the final corner. Not the cleanest ending to the lap, but the first two sectors were oh so fast, so can Frank move up the order yes he can he goes third 28.5 to set up the rest of his session let's look further down who is next up rt fleddy in the ferrari is the answer what time is he going to set a 28.644 behind was verstappen he did a 28.4 but that's not going to be enough because of the invalidation cucumber uh, remains in p4 then he did improve his time i think he was invalid though at uh, peas looks to be further along actually though jim uh, and the other alpha terry is nearing the end to the lap then fourth gear takes a nice tight line through turn 14 balancing the throttle pedal big snap as he opens up the throttle once again coming out of that final corner then Yim up to the line and he is going to remain in 12th Russell up to the line behind and he doesn't find any more time is that time vulnerable though I seriously doubt it then Pease is next and the second Alpha Terry goes fourth and sweet crown in the Mercedes behind goes second I didn't see the time that Hazara uh, did but we'll get that sorted out it was Sweet current has remained in second place. Russell has that pole position, so a late flurry of times to end the session, but it is in the end, as it seems to be the case, as always, Russell takes pole by a margin of a tenth and a half. Yeah, four cars were very close to contention indeed. They only made it just across the line. I believe one of those drivers didn't 
I'm not quite sure which one it was. I saw it did because I saw the Hass go by when Verstappen validated the lap time. The Cucumber also validated. You were spot on there with his validation. So I'm not quite sure where he did it, but uh, he did improve, fortunately for him. But uh, only to P6. And great qualifying for Sweet Crown to pull it out of the pipe, considering he was in P's as dirty air, I think he was in the Avatari, but still put it up to P2. Great job from Williams in P3 and P4. Frank will be looking for. Redemption after retiring in Belgium, hitting the pit lane entry as I was in the party with him last night, playing among us. I never reminded him of that as well. He wasn't very happy when I said that, but uh, <laughs> it was very funny. Yeah, that's a uh, that's that crash was extremely bizarre. Uh, the way it uh, ended up happening. But yeah, uh, Frank looking for more and did certainly do a good job in that qualifying session. So we will see uh, how these drivers are going to adapt then as we head towards the Grand Prix proper. So, and we go. It is the French Grand Prix ahead of us. Conditions look very decidedly overcast. I seem to have a bit of a graphical glitch or maybe not I don't know I just I just saw very heavy rain for about half a second in fact it does look to be raining very lightly in fact Jamie it is the drivers seem to potentially have slick selected but we've got very light rain to kick off this race this could be uh, very messy out there yeah, I looked at the, at the Red Bull pit lane under Perez's name and it says hardcore part tyres. Maybe it could be a slick start because the track hasn't uh, obviously just started raining so it won't be just yet wet yet but we might see a dash into the pit lane in a few last time. I have seen a wet start but dry tyres being used in the races before so we'll see if the rain intensifies the next few minutes. This could be spicy. I think the driver's got slicks on. Yep, looks to me as well. So we get things uh, kicked off. Yes, every driver has selected slick tyres. Uh, medium is, in a full dry race, certainly the race tyre of choice for most of these guys, you would think, uh, over the course of the race distance. But two drivers do decide to go against the grain, Slash and Hazara. And interestingly... You do wonder how long it's going to be, or if we will ever get to intermediate conditions. It, maybe the rain will ease off, I don't know. But if it were to go to enters in the next couple of laps, you'd expect everyone to be putting on the soft tyres. So that isn't the case here, but everyone's circulating around. And, uh, well, we can speculate in many different ways how this race could unfold. But ultimately, the uh, absence uh, of intermediate tyres and the potential as to which way this rain is going to progress makes pre predicting the future here very difficult, Jamie. Oh, yeah, indeed. It could be a very tentative start with the lack of grip out there on those medium slash soft. So, Slash and Hazara could be the quickest off the line with the extra grip they have on the soft core part tyres. It looks like the rain is getting worse as well. It actually start, it did stop. Uh, did start raining until uh, about turn four where Russell went. It stopped. It's turn one and turn two and turn three, but it started again. So, we had a bit of a moment where it did stop, but uh, the rain is definitely intensified indeed. It'll be very greasy out there, and I wonder... I've commentated over a situation like this before where it took about 14 laps in a different league race to the rain kick in. It started raining at the very beginning of the race, but they were on dry tyres. Then 14 laps later, they eventually went on the intermediates. Not quite sure if it's going to be the same scenario. The weather's quite weird in the F1 game itself. If it's, if it's raining, you think you've got the inters, but in the game module, it doesn't work that way, does it? No, uh, I think you can say that for many different scenarios within the Codemasters F1 games. Nevertheless, we will take our places on the grid. Russell and Sweet Crown uh, side by side now parking up and we will get proceedings underway very, very shortly. Uh, the rain does look to be getting heavier. I was actually watching Roku had a big slide heading in to that final corner. So the conditions are very tricky out there. Let's see how the drivers deal with that though coming off of the lane. It's going to potentially get messy down there how well do the drivers cope with these tricky greasy conditions here we go then we are ready to get 27 laps of Paul Ricard underway we have four five lights And eventually they leave the grid and Paul Ricard from the front it is Russell and he converts that pole position at least at first. Sweet Crown was not very well away but he's holding second place for the moment. Shadow Glow and Pees dueling diving into turn one and Pease manages to get in front of the well aimed driver who then has his teammate immediately behind and spinning in the background then Fleddy, Backy, they've been caught up in incidents down there at turn number two. They're going to recover then but they have lost seconds upon seconds to the rest of the grid which seems to be running through the opening few corners uh, all intact for 
four at the moment then. Slash and Azara getting into contact, heading down to turn five, and then opening up onto the Mistral straight. They continue all in a lane. Russell, Sweet Crown, Peas, Shadow Glow, and Frank, the top five. And three through five is very, very tight up there at the moment. Of course, no DRS. We don't expect to see DRS for a few laps yet, especially with these conditions. But everyone filtering through very nicely then. Rocco holding off Yum further back down the field. Backy has managed to recover to the, the uh, rest of the pack, but Fleddy hasn't. He's lost a lot of ground. Campbell and Cucumber are dueling former title ri rivals in League of Europe. Campbell gets in front of the Alfa Romeo. They settle into lane. Russell leads from Sweet Crown, although not by much. They try and navigate these conditions, and uh, with it very tricky out there, I wonder if these drivers are going to stay out on those slicks, or maybe someone's going to hedge their bets and move to the Enters. There's never a talk, I'm not quite sure which is the best way to go, but we're about to find out now. Hazara picks up a 3-second time for in the pit lane comes Pease though. So he's opted to go on the inters and more are diving into the pit lane along with Pease. But Stappen, Rocco, Reggie are in the pit lane too. So let's see if that's the wise decision they think is heavy enough. But I want to mention Pease's start and Slash has a problem again before the pit lane ex exit. Entry side, but I want to mention Peter's start. Fantastic start for him indeed as Lucas overtaking Hazara and now is under pressure from the Alpatari of you. And here comes Hazara trying to go around the outside into two. The contact oh. can be made inevitably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you expect around there, it's very tight. Hazara should have backed out of there as it was. The Aston Martin's court, I believe it was, but uh, Hazara has dropped down into P10. So four drivers have pitted. The rain is definitely intensified. We'll have to keep it in the gap between the leader and P's and P12, whether that goes down dramatically, I'm not quite sure. It's like the, it's like the Dutch Grand Prix 2023, where it started raining and they were on dry tyres. And look at that, it's definitely time for Inters for sure, don't you think? Yeah, the track looks uh, increasingly filled with moisture. I'm keeping an eye on that gap. Flady to Pease is the one to look out for. Yeah, you can see Pease chopping away at that gap. Then it was 14.2 uh, as it stood. Then Pease now back under 14 seconds uh, to the Ferrari in front. I do think we will see pit stops. The rain only looks to be intensifying at this stage. Frank is trying to resist. Campbell then. They duel over P4 and 5 out there on the circuit. Campbell looking for a wider lane. You can see, though, how wet the track is. And Pease has gapped to Flady is coming down rapidly. Everyone should be diving in with the possible exception of Frank, but I don't know. Maybe a lap on the slicks, an extra lap on the slicks is going to be more detrimental than anything. The track though looks soaked all of a sudden as now coming in. There we go. Russell, Sweet Crown, Shadow Glow, Frank, as I, as I may have thought, is the one to stay out, but everyone that isn't going to be influenced by stacking behind their teammates in the pits is going to come into the pit lane. And what this could do though, we will see. Pease was gaining rapidly and he was running up there in P3 before and I think that he may well snatch the lead here through this pit stop phase because of coming in that lap earlier. We could see a huge undercut for Pease by pitting one lap earlier and he might put himself into P1. He's right in the final corner as the rest of the drivers are in the pit lane except Frank who's out there on the mediums as he don't want to do the double stack. But here is Pease on the main straight. Who's that ahead of us? That's Russell. Here comes the pack Ooh. as he gets past the Williams and he almost hits the Williams too. That's where he was. <laughs> actually, actually, he doesn't actually gain anything. He stays in the net P3 as Frank has a bit of jet. So he only stayed where he is right now. Yeah, that's a big, bit of a surprise to me. It must be said. I did expect him to take the uh, race lead, or at least the net race lead for the moment. But yeah, exactly. Third in the train, that's where he was before. Now, the bulk of the field saw, uh, opts for those intermediate green wall tyres uh, with the grooves on to try and cope with this wet surface better. Frank is the unlucky one. Losing time, it's hard to say whether it would, he would have been better off stacking behind Shadow Glow. We're going to have to see. He's burning a lot of battery out there in the lead, of course. Uh, battery is a bit easier to save in these wet conditions. As further back, Campbell and Yuma are battling down the Mistral straight. Campbell was the uh, driver that lost out to the pit phases because he decided to come in and stack behind his teammate, Russell. So he's went from uh, battling away uh, with the Williams drivers. He now sets NP9 for the time being then as Hazara and Fleddy. As Hazara, did he go straight over the chicane then? Because because he's picked up a 10 second time penalty and having a tumultuous race so far after the incredible showing last time out in Spa. So not the day for Hazara as of yet as Frank predictably crawls to the pit lane then uh, from those mediums. It was surely a lap of suffering and I think Jamie, looking at the time that he's lost, I think he would have been better off stacking behind his teammate. Yeah, the double stack should have been in play for him because he lose out a lot of positions but Hazara is driving angrily, angrily out there he did cut the corner gave himself a 10 second time penalty and got himself another penalty after overtaking Fleddy off the track so I'm not quite sure what Hazara is doing or thinking about but Russell takes the lead back off Frank then Frank will rejoin 
Where would he be joining right now? Down into P13 behind Azara. Yeah, he's lost out big time because he was behind his teammate in P5. But the double stack should have worked. Well, should have, should have, uh, it would have worked because Campbell is only in 8th place then. He's still got, still got time to make. He's only about 4 tenths behind Rocco Reggie, who's lost about 2 seconds towards Cucumber. But, but we did notice back at the Belgian Grand Prix, Russell wasn't particularly wet in the... It was, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> wasn't, <laughs> Russell wasn't particularly quick in the wet at the Belgian Grand Prix. So let's see if he might struggle here in France. You can see a sweet crowd all over the back of him. You can see that Shadow is putting pressure on Pisa as we head down towards turn number 7, but can't quite make the move stick. He's to stay behind for the time being. Yeah, he was struggling the wet, and Verstappen was uh, hassling him uh, in those wet conditions. And he runs just in front of Cucumber as Rocco tries to fend off Campbell. The two of them get saved by Saida at the exit of the chicane. Watch out for Yoon behind him as well, as Rocco swerves across to the right-hand side of the track. Then here comes Campbell, and he is on the right now, as they run in towards turn 10. Oh, so close. Look at this. Rocco is squeezed off the lane and runs off the track. Still side by side with the Alpine, trying to hold it all the way around the outside. But he's going to run out of room there, surely. Through goes Campbell eventually. Eventually, after a tough defense from Rocco, and he's going to have to defend once more because Yuma's all over him, as is Baki in the Red Bull. He finds himself on the outside as the Alpha Terry run out of space this time, has Baki in the Red Bull searching for a way through as the drivers struggle for traction then on this slippery surface then. You can see Baki looking as well behind Rocco, who seems to be the driver that's struggling more than anyone then. He's being constantly hounded by Yuma. Campbell has already disappeared up the road. There are a couple of breaks in the train. Some drivers struggling more than others, but Rocco is the one that's really on the back foot. He seems to be really up against these wet conditions at the moment. Yeah, he is indeed. So he's got Baki all over the back of him trying to overtake and Yume as well. He's already 1.2 seconds away from Campbell. So now Campbell's released. Can he catch up to Cucumber? He's putting pressure on the staff at all. Oh, Rocco there. Pick a penalty. He actually has a lot of oversteer too. And he allows the Alpha Tari through. What about the red ball? He tries to go around the outside. Here, can he make his stick? Get shoved off the track slightly. He might pick himself up. A warning, but Hazara's on the inside, taps the Red Bull slightly, he's trying to go around the outside, which he does do. Great move indeed, capitalises after those two make contact, but Shadow is ahead of Pease before the breaking zone. He's trying to stretch that move, goes a bit deep though into the corner without our Pease to come back through and get a city stream, trying to overtake on the top of the hill. And also Sweet Cloud is all over the back of Russell, so keeping him in close contention. These two in the past are phenomenal battles, might see one here again as Pease is right behind Williams, but can't seem to overtake him. What's happening towards further behind? Hazar was trying to go side by side with the Mercedes. Got barely any ERS, but still ahead of the Hasman. Still trying to use overtake, even though he's got absolutely none of it left. But he stays in P9 for the time being. He's really struggling out there. Is the Mercedes of oh, Rocco, is his teammate. Seems to be benefited from this. Up into P2, putting pressure on the race lead. Yeah, Rocco, his car just looks on absolute ace then. You can see Hazara ducking underneath. Lot of contact heading through turn 12 then. They're still banging wheels through the exit then to the kink of turn 13. Rocco trying to hold it all the way around the outside then. Hazara runs pretty deep himself then. Watch out for Baki. He's been frustrated in this battle. He finds the long way around against Rocco and Rocco just has nothing to fight with. Frank can look jewel away in the background then going toe to toe for P12 out there. Remember, every car uh, on track at the moment if they make the checkered flag well score points because we do have points down to 15th in the league of europe so every battle means just as much and these drivers are fighting tooth and nail out there in these exceptionally tough conditions but what those conditions are creating are gaps in what you you said before the race we may get a drs train but that's being thrown out the window because of the rain out there on the circuit then as frank and rocco still battling away heading through turn six and rocco loses another possession he He's a driver. Maybe the setup just isn't quite working out there because he is slipping back almost involuntarily. But up at the front, Russell still under pressure from Sweet Crown. But those two look to be, at the moment, breaking clear. Shadow Glow cannot quite live with this pace. And they're stacking up behind Pease as well. So at the moment, then, the top through just inching away at the moment then. And Sweet Crown looks so, so confident then. Tucked right up in the wake of the race and the championship leader. And Cucumber's going side by side with Verstappen. He's trying to put the move on, which he is going wheel to wheel. Has the inside line for the next quarter. He finally does it as well. He's stuck behind Verstappen for a few laps. And Rocco gets a, another three second time as the opportunity to add to his tally. But Cucumber puts in massive pressure for Verstappen throughout lap one. He finally got the move take done. And that was in the double right hander there. You can see the alpha, the alpha tire appears. They're just squirming in the foreground as Fleddy has overtaken Rocco. Oh. They've actually made contact. I think Fleddy spun by himself. 
Flady recovering in the Ferrari, but yeah, I cut him and he was sideways on the run between turn 11 and 12. Maybe there was contact, didn't quite see. He, he now has Slash all over the back of him and separated. In fact, 13th through 15th are all far and away at the back and Rocco does come in in that Mercedes. Wow, what a disaster class from him. I wonder if it's even going to be wet tyres. The track is just that wet. Uh, we will see. He comes in. Uh, he does put on another set of the enters. I do think that is still the tyre of choice, but maybe just try something different because the pace just doesn't seem to be there at the moment then. One driver that seems to be excelling in these wet conditions is NSX Cucumber. He took Verstappen on the last lap, a driver who himself prides himself in the wet conditions. We saw that last time out in Spa and in Britain earlier on in the season. Now Cucumber though lines up RLPs. He goes to the right hand side, down to Mistral straight, but Pease has got such low wings and it's hard to get over the top of him. He tries to find a long way around. Pease hops over the curb of turn 8 and preserves that position for the time being but Cucumber has so much better grip and traction and he's on the overtake button yet again Pease goes middle of the track to the right hand side goes Cucumber almost running off the circuit battles his way back into line there was a wheel bag in between them and Pease has to yield he nearly ran in square into the back of the Alfa Romeo as he had to tuck in behind and Cucumber makes another place after a face day encounter with the Alfa Tauri of Ariel Pease so Cucumber another place and then goes oh. spearing off the track at a turn 11 Regathers it, but he's going to lose both those places that he gained, or at least one of them. He sweeps right back around the outside of Verstappen as he rejoins and again lights up the rear tyres. So Cucumber in the wars at the moment then, and just as I was upping his uh, ability in the white, he goes and makes that error, costly error, has him back behind Peas, and now that is freeing up Shadow Glow to go right up the road, and the gap between third and fourth is becoming a chasm, Jamie. Yeah, P is doing absolutely everything to defend, and he sees his rival as Rocco gets another three seconds happen to Porsche. I think he's spun at the exit. He's gone. Oh, he's in the wall. He's out of the Grand Prix. He's crashed, and that's going to cause a safety car. Where is that? I can't see it off camera. Off T11. Board, sorry. Yeah, T11. He just went straight on a T11 where Marcus Everson crashed back in 2018, but the safety car has been deployed, and that will help P from preventing Cucumber to overtake him as well. So P looks like he was struggling for all the time being there, being overtaken by Shadow Glow in the early, early, early stages. Now Cucumber's putting pressure on him too. But uh, yeah, this really just showed the, the, grip of the uh, strength of these drivers in the wet conditions, and now the safety cars came out too. So Russell there. Not having easy at the front as Sweet Clown continuously putting pressure on him, but Sweet Clown gets closer and close, but not close enough to overtake him then. As Rocco Reggie then unfortunately retires and becomes the first one, and now we're down to 40 drivers as the safety car has been deployed. But Hazara has been very interesting to watch for some reason because he's picking up loads of penalties. He's got 80 second penalties, so I'm not quite sure what he's been doing in the opening stages there, but he's still in this race in P10, but ultimately dropped all the way to the back with those penalties he has. Yeah, 18 seconds, that's quite remarkable. But, but he did, of course, pick up that 10-second penalty uh, for jumping over the chicane. Rocco was picking up a lot of penalties too before he's gone out of the race uh, at turn 11 on the seventh lap. So we regroup uh, in this race. I do wonder if we're going to see pit stops. I'm not sure if the enters can go the entire race distance from here. Uh, every driver in the field has done one of their mandatory pit stops as Hazara has been picking up a penalty for speeding under the safety car. That's a mistake that you wouldn't expect a top quality driver to make, let alone one that won last time out uh, in Spa. And looks as though my prediction about pit stops is beginning to come to fruition. Everyone, by the looks of things, is going to go to that pit lane, get some fresh enters on. Maybe, well, as we will see, the rain is still not subsiding in the slightest, and the track is absolutely soaked. Standing water will be collecting in some places, and Cesaro picks up another penalty. I have no clue what he's doing out there. And in fact, he retires in the pet lane. Uh, I was just on board with him. So Hazara out this race and straight out. Absolutely fuming by the looks of things. So the Norwegian, who was so imperious uh, last time out, has quite frankly put on a very bizarre performance here tonight as everyone else pets, puts fresh enters on and resets in still very early stages of this race, planning to go the entire distance, you would think. Yeah, it's best to put on a fresh set of bids as well as they tumble down the field. As Mr. Russell in P1 fouled out at the Belgian Grand Prix, but he was trying to go to the dry stage to go on the into towards the slicks instead of going into into slick. But uh, this time, he's learned his lesson and stayed out there, well, in the pit lane on a fresh set of intermediates, and that'll help him towards the later stages as well, getting the best grip he needs. So I think every single driver did pit on under that safety car. And they have done the two stop 
uh, mandatory pit lane, so a two stop, uh, mandatory two stop, which I do forget sometimes in this league. I don't know why I keep forgetting that, but uh, I do need to remember it just in case something happens in the race and I'm wondering why they're making a second stop, but they don't have to. But obviously, there's that two stop rule. Yeah, and uh, don't you race in a, a league yourself where there is a, a two-stop rule? It's good to get reminded of that, I suppose, uh, every yeah. once in a while. Uh, so everyone reset. They've had uh, their uh, two stops served, as you said. So as it stands right now, it's a clear run to the flag, barring any other potential safety cars. There's a human fracas swapping places. Is in fact, the Alpha Tower, the Spaniard, tries to let the Wellings man through and does so. So probably an involuntary swap between the two of them. No, now Frank is trying to get out of the way. So... Uh, I imagine they were both getting prompted by the game to let the other through. That's very, very strange. And uh, in the end, it is Yum that manages to stay in front of Fla Frank. So not quite sure what's going on there. Slash is the one driver that hasn't quite latched onto the train. So we may get the safety car for one more lap. So it will be the end of lap 10 where we get racing back underway as Russell is going to lead yet another safety car restart from Sweet Crown. And these two, as it stands right now, have looked the absolute class of the field tonight, both in the dry conditions and qualifying and in the wet conditions here in the race. Shadow Glow was hounding them a little bit towards the end of that last stint. But at the moment then, Russell has had Sweet Crown for company, and the two of them so far have looked a little bit of a cut above the rest right now. Oh yeah, the league of the room, the top two, but uh, we did see Shadow, Shadow Glow start to gain on the top two, so I wonder if we could try cash those two there, try and gain something off it as well. What about Frank in P10, because we didn't quite see what pace he had earlier as well, as he had to pit a ball all the way down into 40 plays at the time. Now he's up into P10, now back in sync with the rest of the field with the tags to the safety car. We'll see what type of pace he has as well after losing up loads of time. He should have double stats rather stay up one lap later. But it was a, I think it was a great right call for Peace to Pit. Maybe in the second in the second half in the middle set on that lap where the raid really started to impact. Maybe it was even split to the first set to the start to get worse than the second, I'm not quite sure. But uh, yeah, I thought he I thought he gained a lot of time on Russell there, but was still we joined in P3, now Shadow Glow's ahead of him for P3, so that for the top three continues, and what about Cucumber as well, this stage car will help him try and reduce the time to try and catch up with the rest of them too, he's got a lot of pace here in the front under the wet conditions, thanks to the safety car, will it help him try and get himself towards the front of the field? P's, relatively speaking, did seem to be struggling near the end of that stint, so Cucumber will certainly be looking to try and get on the offensive. Just 13 cars left in the race, so lots of points on offer just for seeing the checkered flag, and there is still an awful long way to go, so we will see how this race continues to progress. So we should get back to racing at the end of this lap, and Russell will resume racing and the green flag running. Uh, just in a couple seconds time, we will get that message uh, that signifies the start of green flag running yet again, so they should be coming over the line around about now, uh, or not. There it is, a <laughs> safety car is going to be in this lap, so Russell will lead away from Sweet Crown, try and control it. Of course, there are plenty of options. Russell likes to run it, generally speaking, up to the line pretty much, but we'll see if he decides to uh, hang back uh, or if he's going to go early then try and surprise the second place man behind him then, Sweet Crown, who's in great form at the moment then, will be looking for more. So Russell still controlling the pace, he hasn't slowed it right down yet, the field's still running in formation then, there's no real stacking up, he's keeping the pace relatively high, the safety car still out there on the circuit, it's about to peel off into the pit lane as it arrives at turn 14 and dives in now, so Russell now is free to open up whenever he likes, he takes a very wide line through turn number 12, but doesn't open up the throttle pedals, so we remain as it stands with Russell dragging the brake pedal and waiting and waiting Waiting, looking to get this thing underway. It would be predictable if he were to sweep into this final corner. We will see if he takes a wide entry line and pins the throttle pedal. I'm sure Sweet Crown is prepared for that possibility as well. Looks as though he's still holding back, opening up that final corner, taking a wide entry, straightening up the exit, and away he goes. Russell gets things underway, and he's got a bit of a jump on the man behind him as everyone falls into line as we get racing back on the way here at Paul Ricard, lap 11 then of this French Grand Prix. As it stands right now, no one has got a major jump off the line. Yum was challenging back a little bit but unable to get right into contention so they all run in 
formation. No one making much of an impression, but Russell Lee did a good job on that restart. It was maybe predictable, but it did work, and he managed to get an early lead. And as we, as you alluded to earlier on, Jamie, there's a lot of pace in Cucumbers out for Romeo, and immediately he shoot, looks up towards the Alpha Terry in front of him, searching for a way through. Shadow Glow as well in front, as Pease twitches through turn six, and surely Cucumber is going to get a run here. It's all about straight line speed now as they're both using the EOS in attack and defense mode. As you can see, the battery being applied. As you can see, Pease trying to push him towards the left hand side, trying to force him down the inside. But you can see the straight line speed Pease has, and he stays ahead for the time being. So it looks like Pease got a low downfall setup, heads why He's struggling in the corners and allowing Cucumber to be all over the back of him in those corners there. So Cucumber going to bide his time, be patient, and try away from mistake for Pease. Try and get himself back up into P4. Ironically, that's a mistake he cost him as well. So that's a drop to me to P5. As you can see, the Cucumber, but uh, speed round and still in P2. Russell still leads this Grand Prix. And it started to rain here in, in my area in real life now. So it's raining here on the track and it's raining in real life. Unsurprisingly, in the UK here, it tends to rain a lot indeed. Yeah, well, me further north, it's actually beautiful blue skies at the moment then, so I'm certainly not complaining, but Russell has done a superb job on this restart then. Sweet Crown was all over him in the last stint, but on these fresh tyres then, Russell seems to have turned the tables, and he is moving away, and Shadow Glow looks more ominous behind him, as Peas and Cucumber are side by side, heading out of the fatal corner then. Cucumber drawing level with the Alpha Terry, but again he is outmatched down the straight. Peas has such low wings, and he's able to pull back in front before they reach turn one. This must be so endlessly frustrating for the Canadian who just cannot find a way past the Briton then as he squares off the throttle pedal coming out of turn number two still in front of the Alfa Romeo so he's holding on there but struggling for pace but down the straights he's so so fast and Cucumber can't quite draw level to create opportunities for himself can he find it though as we get towards half distance in this French Grand Prix there are battles galore out there on the circuit then Pease looks to have resisted uh, Cucumber this time out Shadow Glow is looking on the offensive his sweet crown is really struggling out there he looked so fast earlier but now he's on the defensive as shadow glow swarms all over him stetto with cucumber and peas so numerous battles then further up the field verstappen in there as well top 10 underneath with campbell and p7 as well looking on ominously you can see verstappen pecking up that slipstream from cucumber in front of him who tries to break the toe and holds on to p5 so they now run still uh, in a line but russell is taken off then from being pressed pressured uh, at this last stint he's went from the safety car restart now he's pressuring everyone else and that gap which started out of course as just nothing two laps ago is now extended to nearly two seconds what an effort from russell coming out the box then after that safety car restart pulling clear of the rest of loe d1 Indeed he is. Verstappen is still lucky to try and get past Cucumber. Cucumber also trying to overtake Pease at the same time. So Cucumber thinking about overtaking and defending from the Dutchman of Verstappen right behind. Verstappen is quite good in the wet conditions too. And uh, Russell then managed to get the gap towards two seconds there. So he's found some pace despite being under pressure. Like you said, in that first stint, allows that sweet car for dust. And under, under the uh, wing of well, Cucumber's got a three second time penalty. Uh, unfortunately, that must have been at turn one. And uh, yeah, it's a shame there for Cucumber, but it looks like he's got such good pace, but unfortunately a penalty will weigh him down towards the end of the race too. Quite difficult over to overtake in the rain here. Where are, you gonna, where are you gonna overtake? In the corner or on the straight? It depends if your rival's got good straight line speed. You can see Cucumber there essentially pushing Pees with the corner. You can see the little squirm from the Williams of Shadow Glow as he tries to put Sweet Crown under pressure. So Sweet Crown has lost the pace. I'm not quite sure how Russell's managed to find some pace in that uh, Williams Alpine side despite uh, been under pressure for a sweet climb in the first stint, but so let's have a look further back to see what Cucumber does over Stappen. They're just a bit too far back as Fleddy and Luke are having a scrap for P11, so let's see what they're doing down there. Fleddy overtook Luke before the breaker zone, and he puts the Ferrari just inside into level place there. Frank is the back of this DRS trade too, like I said, and uh, on this short straight here, nothing's going to happen. We'll have to wait a few, laps, a few quarters later to see what happens between those guys in the midfield. Overtaking proving oh so difficult for the moment that Pease was all over the road heading out of turn 11 but manages to remain in that fourth place for the time being. Cucumber still all over him and fifth but just can't make use of that pace. The gap to the race leader is beginning to stabilize them but we saw Pease in the last stint. He was falling away from Sweet Crown and from Shadow Glow and now he is sitting right inside of one second. So as it stands right now Sweet Crown seems to be the one that is struggling as Cucumber runs deep through turn 14 to set up the inside of 15 but can't 
quite fine it can't draw alongside he's compromised his own run and now Verstappen smells blood he's in the slipstream picks it up and goes to the outside looking for turn number one can he find a way through he's still got the slipstream for P's in front but can he go the long way around he's gonna break just a little bit later and the second place man in the championship sweeps right around the outside of turn one Verstappen picks up fifth immediately from Cucumber but can he, he uh, Alfa Romeo fight back he looks to the outside but Verstappen's going to cover it up what a brilliant move that was he pinched Cucumber onto the inside line of turn one and Cucumber just could not hold him back through goes Verstappen he now runs fifth with the penalty and just not being able to find a way past P's Cucumber's race is beginning to slip downwards at the moment then but further up the road Shadow Glow is looking to improve his as he pressures Sweet Crown down the Mistral straight again the gap to Russell has stabilised over the last few laps as Sweet Crown looks to begin to find his rhythm out there on the circuit then the gap is starting to come down to Sweet Crown maybe he just needed a couple of laps to feel out the conditions and now it looks like the Mercedes man is beginning to find a groove but still under pressure the Williams driver is not letting up and also Verstappen mighty close towards Pease as well. So Pease doing a mighty job defending from both Cucumber and Verstappen. But the job's not done yet because he's got Verstappen all over his rear wing. Verstappen seems to find more pace in these corners like Cucumber did in the final corner. They tried to go up to the inside but couldn't quite make a stoop. And like you said, therefore, compromise this line. Verstappen was able to go all the way on the outside into turn one and have the inside line into two to finish the move off. But... Uh, here we are, the Verstappen then trying to put uh, P's under massive pressure, just uh, squirming a bit himself in towards the Pulsberg corner as we head now. It's the final corner we go. He's all over the back of it, but still can't find a way past. Russell then goes up to lap 15. The gap's back up to 2.1. Stabilising just a bit, but looks like Russell's got the slight edge over Sweet Card. And Sweet Card thinking about defending now rather than attacking. As Frank has got a pass to Hume. So let's see how that's happened. That's before turn number one then. So must have outdragged him. He is quite low in the ERS, where Hume's got 56%. So he used a bit of battery trying to overtake him. He's up into P9 now. Next target for him is back in and try to get himself back into P5 where he was initially until he stood out there a bit too late and dropped towards P14 but from P14 to P9 in the rain is a great recovery so far with about 12 lots left to go in this race he can still make something of it as we head on the straight now is anybody close to contention you can see Cucumbers there quite close towards Verstappen as uh, so Verstappen there six tenths away from P so P's just realized speed will help him stay ahead of Verstappen for the time being then Shadow Glow's not close towards Sweet Card either so it looks like he's starting to uh, uh, equalize will equalize itself just a bit there and P still hold on to P4. Then P's done a fantastic job ever since the start of the race as well. He started in P5 and he and he jumped both um Williams, I think it was, after he started on the media compound ties, just went past them both and went up to P3. And now he's thinking about defending from these guys behind. He's not giving up whatsoever, but the track does look like it's, it's getting more treacherous out there, it seems. Yes, certainly. You can see the drivers struggling around even more for grip, and these drivers are having to constantly adapt their styles to the conditions to remain afloat in this highly competitive field. And as it stands right now, Sweet Crown is the driver finding the most pace out there. He's beginning to gap Shadow Glow, and he's gained a couple of tenths on Russell on this lap too. The gap 1.6 seconds as they round the final corner. So he's getting himself uh, into view of the race and the championship leader. So now Sweet Crown, after struggling early on, is beginning to come into view. As is Pease in front of Verstappen then. Verstappen drawing ever nearer, but can't find another move heading into Turn 1. And Pease, as you alluded to, I think he's driven such an intelligent race up to this point holding p4 for the moment then and keeping the rampaging mclaren and alfa romeo behind him for the time being can verstappen find a way through overtaking is so difficult campbell is right there as well uh, ready to pounce on any misfortunes for the three cars in front of him just look at how close they are heading through turn six and great traction for verstappen he is right there with peas but peas is so fast down this straight verstappen though he's going to go on the offensive regardless he's burning off that battery so is the man in front of him who begins to derate near the end of the straight. Verstappen can he take advantage of that? He is not near enough into that braking zone and still remaining in P4 is our ELPs holding back this train. This has been the main focal point of action throughout this race but here comes Verstappen once again and he's going to take advantage of the derating. He goes right along the inside of the track drawing level and on the inside but he's pinched in there and now Cucumber tries to take advantage. He checks up behind the McLaren then and he 
has to slot it behind. Verstappen then was just forced onto the tight line head to turn 10 and, and the dry. He'd be fine pulling off that move. As Cucumber dives to the inside of turn 12. He's drawn level. Can he get through on the McLaren? And he forces him up to the edge of the track. Gets slightly better traction too. And now Verstappen's lack of battery is working against him. Can he hold it round the outside as he did in turn 1? This time at turn 14, he's got the inside line into the final corner. Cucumber gets forced out of line right off the track. And now Campbell is taking advantage. Cucumber squirming left and right. Rejoins the track. I think he smashed through one of the uh, road borders. And now Campbell is up alongside his former teammate in a turn number one. And taking advantage of all the squabbling. But Verstappen again holds it around the outside. Can Campbell get the switch back? And the traction in the straight line speed. He's looking for that trifecta. He's looking towards the inside. But Verstappen aggressively cuts him off then. This is war out there on the circuit then. In these wet conditions as Cucumber picks up another time penalty. More frustration and as Verstappen got the elbows out, forced Cucumber out the way and then pinched Campbell into turn one. Verstappen not taking it easy and for once now in this race, the pressure on P's for P4 begins to relent. Wow, Pease is defending. He's been very smart about this. Here comes QBR Campbell back on it once again. Then it's going side by side. Verstappen has no ERS at all. And Campbell puts himself up into P5. But Pease is very, very smart. Into turn 10, he forced Verstappen into a Q angle. And therefore, he could carry the speed to the corner where Pease just swung around the outside. Unlike Cucumber, because I think Cucumber, he did the same thing to Cucumber. But uh, Cucumber just got ahead of him before the corner. And he couldn't make that move, we tried to deal with the stuff. And so great racing there for Pease again. He's still in P4 out of all of this as well. As Sweet Car has actually tried to extend the gap towards Shadow Glow. He did bring the gap to 1.4 between himself and Russell at one stage, but the gap's back up to two seconds again. And you can see Cucumber uh, Campbell's all over the back there. He did lose out of the pit lane, and now he's trying to make up some lost ground after that double stack. He's up to P4. Can he take Pease can he take Pease away from P4? P4 away from Pease, there we go, mix up the words there. But uh, yeah, Pease is once again under pressure from a third different driver. Cucumber, Verstappen failed. What about, Cuc what about Campbell? Would he be successful this time? More challengers stepping up to the plate indeed. This time it's the former D1 champion, Campbell, who searches for that inside line, but it's only a feint. He knows he's not going to lunge a move into that short breaking zone of turn number one, so he remains a P5 for the time being. But Pease is all over the road, heading out of turn number two, and Campbell looks to try and apply that pressure then. He took advantage of the squabble between Verstappen and uh, Cucumber on the last lap, and he's so, so close to these corners, but getting a bit out of shape through four. He's got to watch out for Verstappen too. He is still all over the back. Low battery for all of these guys. Pease has managed to save a little bit more. That is why this entire train has come at him once again as Campbell squirts the throttle to return seven and loses some momentum and now Verstappen is back on his case then down the straight but they both gather up towards Pease. Pease managing to resist them with that top end speed. Again, but Verstappen, oh, Campbell sorry, runs into the back of him then late on the brakes. Did he avoid damage then? Pease was knocked sideways, managed to recover. Uh, but Campbell, did he avoid damage? He w crashed out of the sprint race at Spa last time out, running into the back of P's in a similar situation then, coming into pool on that occasion. So he remains in P5 for the time being now. Back, he's getting interested in Verstappen. This battle for P4 has been utterly absorbing all the way through as we get into the final third of this French Grand Prix. Frank as well has caught back. So this train behind P's continues to grow in numbers. And yes, yeah, just challenger stepping up to the plate. Campbell had to go on the defensive then after that small mistake going into the second sector. And now he tries to turn his focus to Pease, but Pease still standing firm and fending off all comers behind him. Yeah, incredible. Pease has been under massive threats and challenges like this whole race. It still remains in P4. Only Shadow Glow has only got past him. But uh, Sweet Car starts to lose more time. A slash is in the pit lane, so we'll see why he's done that, whether it's a full wing change or, or an intermediate change. We're not quite sure. But uh, here we are then on board with Campbell to see if he can try to take Pease. He's very, very close to the back of him. Verstappen is looking interested too after he got overtaken by Campbell fighting with Pease. But uh, that's been the main highlight of this race, hasn't it, between Pease and the rest of the guys behind trying to overtake him. But I uh, can't quite do it as Shadow Glow is still on the back of Sweet Clown, who's lost about more time. The gap is 2.7, so Russell has actually is looking comfortable now in the race lead after being under threat in the first stint. And now he's alone for the time being there. Verstappen squirms out of turn number seven there as we head towards the chicane once again. And I think QVR Campbell 
Has got the battery to try and match peas on this straight as we head down towards the heavy breaker zone. No moves being made, although Frank is under pressure from Cuco behind. Slash has gone onto a banner set of inters. Not quite sure if that's a standard stop or or um if he did his two stop, I'm not quite sure whether he thought the tires would make it towards the end. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have a look at it right now. As Cucumber has overtaken Frank up the inside, he goes. He just out dragged him before the corner and he puts himself back up to Pierre. They tried to make amends after he goes off the track at the final corner, although he's got a physical tablet which will demote him down the order with the rest of the guys. Slash has done a three stop along with Luke as well, so it is. They've done their mandatory two stop. I'm not quite sure if they knew that the tires would go to the end or they just wanted a fresh set of inters to take them towards the end of the Grand Prix for safety. Yeah, I'm not sure if the tyres, these enters, are going to go the distance. It's hard to tell at this stage. We still have uh, just uh, just over eight laps to go then as Campbell prods and pushes Pease round that final corner. But he doesn't have the battery, as you said, to complete a manoeuvre on the straight. Neither does Verstappen, though, in P6. So everyone is locked at the moment uh, in formation for the time being. Uh, Cucumber has gone eighth now, challenging Backy for seventh. Just look in front of him. And those three cars at the head of the train are running practically no the tailless cucumber gets a snap on heading out of turn two manages to save it still runs eighth though and he's currently going to be demoted to tenth as it stands with penalties so frustration from his campbell fades an inside line on peas but doesn't quite find the space but peas is wide and now campbell has he seized this chance they bang wheels wheel to side pod heading through turn number six and is peas beaten this time they're still side by side coming out seven and watch for verstappen too he's got a double slipstream so parallel down the straight the two cars in front cucumber has gone out the race further back as now a VSC is brought out, Cucumber going out at turn 7, the race neutralised, Pees managing to resist uh, Campbell and Verstappen, I didn't see that for Cucumber, I wonder if he went out on his own or if he was battling with another car, Backy perhaps, it's hard to say, but the Alfa Romeo is out of this race after what really was an endlessly frustrating night, he will fall down the order, he will not uh, he will only get, I believe, half points for this race as Slash and Luke will get past them as well. So VSC only not a full safety car, but Cucumber. Well, that just shows you need more than pace to get results here and really just not the night that he was after. Uh, I was looking strong in the way it was Cucumber, but uh, being pushed around by Verstappen hasn't held in the final corner and also getting a three second tablet seat now he's out of the race. But this helps P generate some more US. He, I bet he was glad that the virtual safety car came out at the exact right time because Verstappen and Cucumber, Verstappen and Campbell were putting all sorts of pressure on the grip there for P4 but still couldn't get past Cucumber, sorry, Campbell, I don't know why I get confused between Cucumber Stappen and Campbell. In. Yeah, Verstappen has come to the pit lane and also Backy taps the back of him but thankfully does not give him a five second tablet because usually if you taps on the back of the pit lane you obviously bunch up their speed and get them, get them a five second time. I've seen it plenty of times myself as well. And Cucumbers left a session of frustration. But there, Pitter, the virtual safety car has ended there. So I wonder if those tyres can't go towards the end of the graph. Really, intermediates are not a great tyre for grip. They're not really good tyre for going to the end. Or maybe it's just the wet the wet tyres can go towards the end, but the Inters can't. So we'll see if the rest of the guys will decide to quit a bit lane with five laps left to go in this race. I have seen a scenario where Ty has been taken for a long distance and with five laps left to go, people have pitted because they suffered punches towards the end of the Grand Prix. So I wonder if these guys are coming towards the end. But the staff has gone for the gamble. Has it paid off though? Will it work? Let's see how that is going to unfold. Uh, certainly, I would say if you stayed out under that VSC, you are planning to go to the end of the race. There is no other way about it. So these guys are all going to extend. You can see how much time I think that Verstappen uh, and Baki were certainly hoping uh, that the VSC would stay on for a little bit longer. But they only probably gained a small amount of time. And there's a big gulf between them and the pack in front. So it's another brave strategy call from Verstappen, you have to say. But will this one work uh, or will it suffer the same thing? as the one before it then last time out in Spa. So we will see, but that's an awful big gap to try and close down 16 and a half seconds to Fleddy in P8. So we will keep our attentions on the battles for P2 and P4. That is the uh, real main attractions out on circuit at the moment as Campbell continues to hound Pease and Pease continues to keep a hold of that fourth place. It's been a remarkable defensive effort uh, which really only wet conditions allow 
knows you to do on this game, but he's managed to keep the, uh, the Alpine at bay. Can he continue to do so? And Sweet Crown as well under pressure. His tires seem to be going off a bit faster than everyone else around him. As Campbell picks up the slipstream, heading towards turn one, he looks to the inside, breaks a little bit earlier though, and it was a bit of a stretch too far to lunge that one from distance. He keeps the pressure on Pease, but he has much, much less battery, so making an overtake is going to be oh so difficult then. He uses the slipstream yet again, looks inside of turn three again though, does not commit to the move, and you sense he's using up his battery for little gain at the moment then, as he still has nowhere to go through these corners, and is staring at the Alpha, uh, Alpha Terry's rear wing as they plant the throttle gradually, heading off of turn number six. Watch for Shadow Glow too, he's picking up a slipstream on the second place Mercedes. Can he find a move in towards turn eight? He sets it up, but does not quite find it, and uh, Steto for Campbell cannot quite find a move. It seems as though straight line speed is such a determining factor down these straights, and Sweet Crown and Pease are able to keep their adversaries behind for the time being, and Shadow Glow has burned off his battery, as has Campbell behind Pease, so throwing everything at the moves and trying to get that battery off, trying to gain that straight line speed, but if the car in front's got low wings, without DRS, making those moves is also difficult. Yeah, I think Campbell, I think he has to save a bit more here. I try to stay, just stay behind Pease for a few laps or so and try and get the battery back and try and attack him in the right place at the right time because he's using his ERS unnecessarily in the, the place you don't expect him to use it. And uh, once again, Shadow Glow there is also close behind Sweet Clown. Russell has got this in the bag for sure. I thought to be Sweet Clown versus Russell evidently in the first stint, but it's been switched around ever since the safety car came out. Russell decided, oh, well, I'm going to push now. And now the count's 5.2 seconds in front uh, behind him, so he's got nothing to worry about whatsoever. And Sweet Clown there got everything to worry about. Shadow Glow right behind. Shadow Glow has been stuck behind Sweet Clown ever since he overtook Pease uh, a few laps ago in this race. But uh, Keith Verstappen's getting a lot of time. Wow. Uh, Fleddy's getting about eight seconds or maybe nine, maybe more than that actually, against Fleddy as well. So Verstappen's on a challenge. He had Slash all over the back of him. Back he just overtook Slash. He puts himself up into P10, also one of those drivers that pitted as well. But here we are once again, two laps to go. Campbell did have the back of Pease and did sense him a bit wide, hence why Campbell was able to get alongside him, going side by side in this particular corner, but he's not able to do it again, and I think Pease will have the advantage with the straight line speed, and extra battery he has in his disposal, he's got 48%, whereas Campbell's only got 6 or 5 now, so uh, he's not able to use it, as you can see that even in the slip stream, he's losing time. Unable to quite create an overtaking opportunity. By the way, we do have to keep an eye on Verstappen. He was four seconds quicker than everyone in front of him on that last lap. They're all running around about the 145s. He was in the one, the high 140s. So absolutely flying out there as Verstappen on fresh tyres, as is Baki behind him. So they may well be threatening near the end of this race. They, they, there are still laps on the board to make those moves happen. Still, these tantalising on-track battles continue out there. And the kind of... I suppose more subdued action that you don't get when DRS is activated. It's a more tactical, you could say, and a bit more absorbing potentially as overtakes are so much harder as Shadow Glow and Campbell are finding out to their cost. Frank is running in P6 up behind them. It's been a good recovery drive from the Williams, but he's not quite found a way through on the cars in front of him just yet. But yeah, for Stappen and Baki, watch for those guys because they are lapping seconds faster than the cars in front as those intermediates that have been on since around about lap eight or nine nine in this race are beginning to fall away from the leading group. Yeah, so Pease and Co are entering turn one, whereas Verstappen's at the final corner. So watch out for him in the last few laps. The massive inter deficit between the old inters and new inters will gain a massive effect and therefore will gain a lot of time in his last three laps to the Grand Prix. So could we, could we see Verstappen I'm rather than seeing, I know it sounds crazy that he's quite far behind them, but I've seen scenarios where he gains a lot of time where the guys are managing tyres and really struggling for grip. And once again, Campbell's all over the back. ILT Frank has also got himself included in this battle. But we'll see how he's able to cope against these two. Is once again, Pete gets a good reload out of the corner at turn seven and applies his ERS. Once again, he turns it off because he knows that Campbell is too far back to make a move. As Campbell, once again, 0% ERS, so he's got no battery whatsoever. That could be the uh, downfall of him in P5 having no battery to overtake him and once again Sweet Clown is keeping Shadow Glow at bay so Sweet Clown and P is the best defenders so far in this Grand Prix the last three laps of this Grand Prix I wonder how many positions for Stafford can make can he overtake P is can he get us the back of him with the amount of corn and the amount of grip he has on those brand new set of intermediate tyres but we're all about to find out where three laps have to go in this Grand Prix 
And here he is, QVR Campbell once again shaping up bees, but not able to get close enough as Frank is in the background, and so is Yume as well. IoT Flooding might find QVR for stopping all over the back of him very shortly as well. The gap is only 4.7. It was about 20 seconds, about two or three laps ago. He's gained a huge chunk of time on Freddy, and back he picks himself up, a three-second time penalty. The only driver in this race to pick up penalties so far after Cucumber and Hazara retired from this Grand Prix, which caused the virtual safety car a few laps ago. And that's where Verstappen pitted. Maybe it will work out at his advantage, I'm not quite sure, or he might lose a bit of, lose a bit of time. There are only three laps left in this Grand Prix, but Verstappen's pace, just watching his onboards and the contrast between him and the cars in front in terms of the grip that's available to him is quite astounding. But he is running out of laps. Can he make this happen? He's going to, I would imagine, get up to the back of Fleddy on this lap. So then the question is, can he find a way through it? And Fleddy is still some way behind the, the cars in front. He may well even be challenging this Pease led train as Cabell is still frustrated. Pease struggles for traction a little bit. On this occasion, Cabell lights up the rear tyres, trying to pursue him, but then all it takes for Pease is just a little blip of the overtake button. He has more ERS at his disposal than Cabell, and Cabell, these last few laps, has seemingly found no answer for the man in front of him and has had no real strong threat. He's got to get it done through the traction zones, you would think, but Pease is strong enough out of the corners to negate that. Shadowglow still chasing Sweet Crown, and Sweet Crown doesn't have the kind of ERS advantage that Pease has in his battles, so Shadowglow may be able to create a move. He takes a narrower line through turn 11, tries to create an opportunity, doesn't quite come to him then. He's looking all over, but cannot break down the defense of the Mercedes. Of course, tires falling off is something you have to look for as well as the grip begins to fall away. These intermediates are well past their best, and some of these drivers will have managed them inevitably a little bit better than others. But just coming up now, with two laps to go, Russell is firmly in control of this race, still battles, finally poised from behind, but overtakes, still proving so difficult for Shadowglow and for Campbell. Campbell is oh so close out of that final corner, but there is at the moment nothing he can do on the straights. I thought QVR Camp uh, Campbell would go for a move into the final corner. He had more forward momentum at uh, the penultimate corner turn 14. And I thought he could sh shape it up into turn 15, but uh, decided against it. And now here we are once again, using the ERS in this particular part of the section, which I thought oh. was going to have, you can see the, 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 rear end, the rear brakes locking up there, which caused him to slide through the corners. And he's got, look at Verstappen that is overtaken from Leddy. He's not too far behind this gag of the cars, but is it a bit too late because the guy's quite far ahead, but you never know how much time he could gain. So, fleddy has been overtaken. The next target for him is June, which is about 3.7 seconds away. He gained a lot of time before so he might get him. And Shadow Glow then finally overtakes Speed Cloud. Or does he? Because Speed Cloud's on the outside. Inside is Shadow Glow. Outbreaks himself into the corner. They go side by side. A bit of contact's made as well. Out of the corner. Let's see if he gets a better exit. It's Shadow Glow. He finally gets past Speed Cloud. But Speed Cloud has got any answers. Can he try and get back ahead of him with the solution in the ERS? No, he can't for the time being. So Shadow Glow has finally overtaken Speed Cloud. Great move indeed. I've been stuck behind him. Majority of this race, he'd be shaping up that move ever since what laps and laps ago. I can't remember now, ever since before the safety car came out as well. So, a uh, great move indeed from Shadow Glow. He'll be finally relieved as well as Sweet Crown gets to, ch gets to the pedals a bit too early there and loses traction. But uh, now the main focus is the battle for P4. Then Verstappen's three seconds behind, so he gains an extra eight tenths on the lap alone, trying to overtake June. And here we are. You can see the McLaren in the background, the shot of P's there as we head towards the Pulse corner. What's, what's Campbell going to do? He's going to stay behind for the time being. Will he go to the inside? Yes, he will. Up to the inside. Oh. It's a final corner. Make contact made as well. He forces Pease on the outside. He goes off the track, does Pease. And Campbell is finally Frank. through. What about Frank? And Campbell's slowing down. He might allow Pease back through after pushing off the track. And look at Frank going wheel to wheel with Pease. But Pease again stays in P4. Do you know what? Great respect there for Campbell. He realizes that he pushed Pease off the track. So he gave the position back immediately. Now Frank has got off the track himself. I don't think he got forced off. He just plainly outbroke himself. But now he's fallen into P6 still. So. Frank looks like he was about to give a two for one, has gone back into sixth place and now under pressure from June. So Campbell, on the final lap of the Grand Prix, it looks like he's about to take P4 away, but he realised he made a mistake and the great sportsmanship he has, he gave the place back. 
Yeah, great respect from Campbell. Can he find a way through on Merritt, though? He is up behind Pease. This will be his last opportunity. There may be chances in the final sector. He may make another move into the final corner, but Pease violently breaks that toe and manages to keep the Alpine at bay then. Verstappen's charge as well towards Frank and Yum. They run back and forth down the main straight, but can't quite find a way through at the moment then. Verstappen is trying to close the distance, but he's just running out of time. That strategical looks to be working against him then. So Verstappen still remains P8. And up in front, though, Russell is well in control. And he looks to have this race firmly wrapped up, as he has done for some time. The championship leader is going to take a major step towards getting that title in his locker. There's only going to be three rounds to go after the rest. And he adds it stands right now. There looks to be no driver that can challenge him. Round the final corner, he goes. And Russell, the Alpine man, is going to take yet another victory here in Eloise. Division 1, Russell wins in France, and Shadowglow will come through in second end. Campbell is searching for one last move on PZ, managed to force a mistake. Right in the final corner, Shadowglow second, sweet crown in third. Campbell squirms all over the road looking for fourth, but doesn't quite find it. PZ fourth, Campbell fifth, then it is Frank, Yim, Verstappen. They come over the line, has won a group of five over the line. Would have been interesting to see another lap of that. Fleddy from Baki. 9th and 10th slash and look we'll see out the finishers to this French Grand Prix Russell as he has done largely throughout the season drove away from everything else but that battle for P4 was my highlight wow yeah definitely the highlight of the race the battle for P2 how on earth did P stay in P4 after all of that three different three different three four different drivers coming at him and they all failed eventually but uh yeah Campbell trying to go up the inside like Verstappen did or Cucumber, someone's going to get a force fight out of there because you go wheel to wheel there, it's not really great, unfortunately, unless you're fully alongside and ahead into the corner, claim the apex, but uh, they were both side by side into the apex, and one of them got forced to try. But Russell, fantastic drive ever since the get go. Looks like he was under pressure for Sweet Cloud in the first stage, but something switched on in the second stage and pulled away from the Dutchman indeed. A Shadow Glow, great drive again, up into P2, and uh, yeah, what a fantastic race. Although Verstappen was so close behind. The, pair, the, the four drivers ahead of him, but not close enough. He ran out of time, unfortunately. So it looks like that pit stop was in his favours, but uh, just for our last to do so and stays in PA. He made the decision to go on the uh, stay on the dry stay on the instant seat towards the dry period, but he had a, such a pace advantage, he stayed in P3, but this time it's cost him. It has cost him, indeed. He sets P8. Uh, Shadow Glow is going to gain a lot of points on him, and as it stands right now, with another win for Russell, it's looking more like a fight for second in the standings now. He has checked out thoroughly in that championship fight. He has not wrapped it up mathematically. He will have a chance to do so, I believe, at the next round. So, Russell continues. Actually, does he have a chance to... He, he may... Yes, he will. He will have a chance to wrap up the championship next time out in Hungary. But he hasn't got it yet, but he's firmly on his way to doing so. Shadow Glow managed to grab that P2 right at the end uh, from Sweet Crown. And those two uh, will move more into a fight uh, for a second in the championship with Verstappen. So the... Uh, Fight for the uh, overall title seems to be slipping away from Verstappen and indeed the rest of this D1 field, but certainly a battle for second to look forward to. But ultimately, when Russell can just drive away from the rest of the field like that, there's very little that anyone can do against him. Oh, yeah, these fine fashion Russell did never let the race from start to finish, although Frank did a lap, did lead a lap, I think he did. But uh, yeah, Russell, fantastic job again here at the first GP. After missing out on the podium at the last one, he finished in P4 when he stayed out of the safety car, which turned out to be the wrong decision. But this time, he managed to make it right and put himself up into P1. Sweet Crown, another podium yet again for the Dutch, but a very consistent driver is Sweet Crown. And once again, he finds himself on the podium after a dismal race back at the Belgian Grand Prix after he spun twice, the first one at the first corner, and the other one at the bus that came. But this time, no mistakes were made. And also a great race to Shadow Glow indeed. Uh, such good pace in the wet conditions. Who knows what, what he could have done against Russell if he gets stuck behind Sweet Connor Pease and start a race. But uh, that's the wet conditions for you. It's just so much difficulty to overtake because uh, it might be faster in the corners, but in the straights, the guys pull away and therefore you have no response whatsoever because you don't have DRS in these conditions because it's too dangerous, evidently. And also, you don't have any straight line speed either because of the ERS you have. The lower the ERS people had in this race, they weren't able to, able to make an overtake of the guys ahead. You generally see that um, 
running higher wings tends to yield more pace in wet conditions, and that may be true, but when it comes to a battle like that, often just sheer grunt down the straights is uh, what makes the difference, and we saw that uh, in those fights, particularly, of course, that battle for position four. Uh, so I will see, I don't imagine the standings are going to be updated uh, just yet, uh, but we will get an update on that, sure. Nevertheless, Russell's championship lead is going to be very substantial, and with just three races to go, it's going to be very difficult uh, to stop that charge. The Hungaro Ring, though, will be the venue of the next race. The uh, track dubbed Monaco without the barriers. That should tell you uh, what to expect from that circuit. Uh, very, very technical and very, very tough for all these drivers to challenge. So we'll see how they get on next time out. We've had wet conditions the uh, last two rounds. We'll see if we do get the same uh, from that Hungarian Grand Prix. But that is what you have to look forward to next time out. But I think that is going to just about wrap up, wrap up everything for tonight then here at the French Grand Prix, the 11th round of 14 in this 11th season of LOE Division 1. That is now in the books and we look forward to round 12 next week. Be sure to tune in to that one. But I think with just about everything said and done for round 11 for myself and Jamie, it is goodbye for now and until next time, we'll see you later.